Lovely people of the internet, young and old, it's great to have you here with this is Officer Dan and the boys back at you with a freshie. Today, I can't believe this is even real life, but we are covering the IS-200, IS-300, Alteza rear lower control arms. Just to preface the shock that's waving over the room right now, yes, we're adding another chassis to our GK fleet. Now you might know by now that we're Nissan guys at heart, but after coming out of the Nissan closet, we can indeed confirm there are other fish in the sea that are actually pretty cool, kinda. Well, anyway, we have this super cute puppy here in the workshop that we're dying to dig into and invest some GK parts onto, so let's do just that. Now, the investment we're putting our hard-earned blood, sweat, and tears into are these rear lower control arms you see on your screen right meow. Now, if you're an IS, aka Lexus dude, and are new here to the GK channel, one thing you'll quickly learn is how much adjustment and options we love to give on our products, and there are a bunch on this arm that we are excited to show you. We do this so you can run these ice cream scoopers exactly how you want them. We even threw in motion ratio adjustment and a provision for your ride height sensor. IS dudes, come on, give me a high five on that one. Thanks. Now from here, if you want your brain to explode any further with features, your best bet is to whip up your overpriced laptop, go to the website, and on that page you'll find everything you need to know about what these have to offer, some facts, and even an assembly guide. Let's head on over to the four-door cruiser and get stuck into it. The first and most important step in any install is to despise the OEM suspension that has been holding you back this entire time. This is absolutely 100% without a doubt the reason every Everything goes wrong in your life and not your student debt, global warming, or existential crisis you're probably having right now. It's these ice cream scoopers right here. Let's go ahead and change those things out. First step, throw a spanner and a ratchet over the link, pin, nut, and bolt, wind that off, and get it out of the way. Once that's been pulled on out, zip over to the coilover bolt and nut and get the correct size socket and spanner, obviously, then loosen and remove that, leaving the bolt on for now. We need something to hold everything up. Head further outboard, and this is the eccentric bolt. So when you go and get an alignment, this is the bolt they're turning to adjust your alignment. Chuck a spanner on one side and loosen that nut, leaving that bolt in also for now. And lastly, head inboard to the center of the car to the bolt that's securing the arm to the actual subframe, loosen and remove the nut, and get it out of the way. Now this bit, you could probably do by hand. Prop the suspension up and remove the bolt from the coilover whilst supporting it. Then head inwards and remove the bolt from the subframe side and lastly remove that goddamn ugly eccentric bolt from the knuckle. God, you're so strong. Look at you go. Great job, my guy. We've removed the OEM ice cream scooper and now we're ready to add some GK Tech value to this here unit. Before we do that, we need to run through adjusting these suckers so you know exactly what to set them to. First thing you want to do is reference the assembly guide, which will show you all of this, but if you don't have it handy, this will be your auditory and visual guide to doing so. Once again, if you're a newbie to, well, basically anything mechanical, pay attention. First things first, if you want your arms to be as long as possible, get that gang gang camber you so want. Wind the extender and bearing out as far as possible to the maximum length which we're showing right here on the screen, which measures it in 100 millimeters, measuring from the middle of the bearing to the edge of the arm, and that is made up of 72 millimeters, measuring from the center of the bearing to the edge of the extender. Now. Even if you wanted to go to just the OEM length, we recommend winding it out to the maximum length, then down from there. This makes sure you have a nice amount of thread engagement on both the extender and bearing. Once wound down, you'd be at OEM specs, and these would measure in at 75 millimeters, measuring from the center of the bearing to the edge of the arm, which is made up of 47 millimeters from the center of the bearing to the edge of the extender. Now, if you don't have a tape measure or absolutely can't be bothered for some reason, you have to get back to your busy schedule you can always just compare them to the oem arms again just making sure you have a healthy amount of thread overlap on the adjuster and the rose joint like we just mentioned so we have set ours to oem lengths 
Now that that has been set, go ahead and throw your new and improved ice cream scooper up onto the subframe mount and throw that subframe bolt through said bearing and inserts holding it in place for now. Remember when I said we love adjustment and giving you as many choices as you can? This is what I meant. We've given you another mounting position to work with, so if you were to throw the mounting bolt through the top hole, you'd be lowering your IS 25 millimeters or one inch. If you don't want to go for the top and up for the bottom one, you'd be shipped off to the next nursing home to play Scrabble. That would be the OEM option, and you'd best be breaking that Scrabble board out as we need the OEM option for our ride. Now you might have noticed that we included a little treat for our IS dudes, that being a replacement bolt for the ugly OEM eccentric bolt, as that thing will probably move after your next clutch kick. Now with that being said, throw the supplied metal beauty through the arm and knuckle for now and hold that in place and let's slip further inwards towards the coilover mount. So right now, where the coilover mounts to with all its glorious adjustment is known as the motion ratio adjustment, meaning you can vary your wheel rates without changing your springs. How sick is that? The hole closest to the inside of the center of the car would be the soft setting, which means the complete opposite side would be the stiffer setting. And that brings us back to the Scrabble playing OEM setting, which you guessed it, is exactly where we're throwing the bolt through for now. So go ahead and get my goddamn dentures, please. Now let's slide over to the link pin, which surprise, surprise, you have adjustment on as well. Now the hole closest to the inside of the center of the car is the softer setting, which means that the hole on the complete opposite side is the stiffer setting. Now if you've set the arm to OEM position just like we have, this means the second hole from the outside is the grandma napping three times a day OEM spec that we're showing right here on the screen. In our case, we needed a wee bit of stiffness in our lives, so we've set it right there. Every setup is different, and the beautiful thing about this is you can adjust it to how you need it to throw that bolt through and head over to the other side of the arm where you can see the bolts anxiously waiting for their nuts to be tossed up in there. Wind all three said nuts into their respective bolts as well as the inside most nut that secures the whole goddamn thing to the subframe. Now break out your torque wrench, massage its shoulders because it's going to be getting some work, put some Vaseline under its eyes and give it some last minute motivational words before it smashes out these serious torque specs. Starting with the inside subframe bolt, tighten and torque that sucker to the specs below. Now being that the coilover was talking smack about our right height, smack that sucker with a left and right goodnight click for the torque wrench to the specs shown right here on the screen. The outside knuckle and bolt want some action as well, so after ducking and weaving we can smack that B with some torque specs which are located right here. Change up your tooling and kiss that cross on your chest for one last chance of energy and tighten and torque the end link to the freaking torque specs shown on the screen. Those nuts ain't got nothing on this torque wrench. Pop the torque thunder from down under back into its home until it's called out next. Now that the violence is over and everything is mounted up, go over to the bearing and you want to make sure that the bearing is not cocked to the left or right and is central, like something that is central. Use your goddamn imaginations, please. Before we forget another massive advantage you have, and to obviously not have to loosen and remove the bolts, then break out the torque wrench, then lay some torque smackdowns, is that the arms are adjustable on the car. Praise the Lord, I know you can hear me out there. You're welcome. If you do need to adjust them, just wind it inwards or outwards from that center hex like we're showing you here on the screen. We're happy with it where it was as the denture spec, so we'll leave it right there. Now provided the bearing is central, wind those nuts down and then hold that center hex and tighten and torque the locking nuts down nice and tight as you do not want this thing adjusting itself, I promise. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, do not forget about the headlight sensor mount. Our little bundle of joy unfortunately was not blessed with this option, so we don't have the luxury of giving you a visual. In saying that, we gave you guys more than enough holes to mount it wherever you need, just so there shouldn't be any issues. And we did it guys. You've added your first adjustable arm to your whip, you've been indicted into the GK Tech fam and a plethora of 4130 chromoly adjustment, torque specs, and freaking awesome install videos. You probably took advantage of all that adjustment and if you did, please go get an alignment. It is needed and it makes a world of difference. This thing's gonna drive great, you're gonna love it. And speaking of those dudes that love it, we've got plenty of it. They throw these vids together to make your life a little easier and put a smile on your face or not. If you need any help, don't hesitate to reach out to us all. We're always here and willing to help. If you don't know what you're doing at 
at all. Where those noises are coming from when you lowered the car, please get a professional to help you reinstall the parts. This has been Officer Dan, DK, and Johnny Caps taking over the world one nut at a time. Peace. One nut at a time. <laughs> <laughs> So there's a few emperors who tried to take over the world one night at a time. Yeah, good one, John. <laughs>